Welcome back for episode five of our educational series, Weather 101. This installment will focus on atmospheric air pressure. The atmosphere is made up of many, many tiny air molecules, all moving in random directions. And when they strike things, they exert a small force. Adding all the forces from all the molecules in the atmosphere leads to atmospheric air pressure. In the atmosphere, air pressure will always be highest close to the ground, decreasing as you get higher above the surface. Why do you think that is? Well, it's gravity. The Earth's gravitational pull causes air molecules to stack up at the surface and become more sparse as you get farther from the center of the Earth. Have you ever flown in an airplane? Do you remember the flight attendants explaining how to use the oxygen masks? This instruction is necessary because the number of air molecules at the height that planes fly is a much smaller number than we're used to, resulting in less oxygen than our bodies need. Now that we know what air pressure is, let's take a look at what makes it change. Fair warning, we're going to need to use some multiplication and division to explain this. Pressure changes are governed by a principle called the ideal gas law. The P on the left side of this equation, as you might have guessed, stands for pressure. Changes in the variables on the right side of the equation force changes in pressure. We touched on one of these previously. N which stands for the number of molecules. As we've already seen, pressure increases as the number of molecules increases and vice versa. Air temperature, T, has a similar effect on air pressure. When you heat an air molecule, it moves faster, increasing the chance that it will hit things more often. More hits means more pressure. So pressure will trend in the same direction as the temperature. But what about the V? The volume. Changes in volume have an opposite effect on pressure. Decreasing the volume forces an increase in pressure because there is less room for the molecules to move, increasing the hits. While increasing the volume gives molecules more room to move, decreasing the chance of hits. Whew, that was a lot of math. So let's just summarize exactly what the math tells us. Pressure increases when the number of molecules increases, the temperature increases, or the volume decreases. Conversely, pressure decreases when the number of molecules decreases, the temperature decreases, or the volume increases. One thing about the atmosphere is that, that it likes to be in balance. And where things are not in balance, or not equal, it tries to fix it. There are many local areas of high and low pressure at any one time in the atmosphere, at every level. So here's a question. How would you equalize the pressure between this area of high and low pressure? You need to raise the pressure in the low and lower the pressure in the high, right? So the easiest way to do that is to move pressure from the high to the low. Therefore, due to the difference in pressure alone, air blows horizontally from high to low pressure. What does air pressure mean for our weather conditions? Well, high pressure at ground level leads to happy weather. It is associated with clearing skies, light winds, and usually cooler temperatures. On the other hand, approaching low pressure is associated with lousy weather, including increased cloudiness, precipitation and storms, increased wind speeds, and usually warmer conditions. So it's quiz time. 
let's see how much you've learned about air pressure. First, pause the video and then answer each question. Restart the video when you're finished. All right, here are the correct answers. If you answered true, that air pressure is highest at ground level and decreases with height, false, that increasing temperature does not cause air pressure to decrease, true, that air blows from high to low pressure, and D, that approaching low pressure is associated with increasing cloudiness, warm temperatures, and breezy conditions, as well as increased precipitation and storms, then you've really got the hang of air pressure. Before we go, do you want to experiment with air pressure at home? First, grab an adult, a cup, an index card, and a water source. Fill the cup about one-third with water and cover the open end of the cup completely with the index card. Put your hand over the card, holding it in place while you turn the cup upside down. Then, and here's the scary part, remove your hand. Now you probably thought the water would fall out, making a mess everywhere, right? Instead, the index card and water remain suspended because the air outside the cup exerts more pressure than the water inside, holding everything in place. Cool, huh? Thank you for checking out this episode on air pressure in our Weather 101 series. Stay tuned for episode 6, where we'll talk clouds.